Welcome to KM6LYW Radio. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, amateur radio, maybe some digital modes. Uh, so here's the scenario. You're in the middle of nowhere, somewhere you've never been. Maybe you're traveling. Uh, you don't know any of the voice repeaters in the area. Your cell phone's dead. You don't have access to repeater book. What do you do? That's the pop quiz. What do you do? Well, I'm going to tell you that if you have an HT, like this one, an APRS-enabled HT, that you can find all of the voice repeaters in your area using nothing more than this device, an APRS-enabled HT. We're going to talk about it next on KM6LYW Radio. Okay, now you guys keep commenting about the bumper music more than the content here. So you guys uh, keep that up. Um, I'm just going to keep doing it. All right, so that, that's all on you, the bumper music. Um, if this is your first time watching that, I'm sure you don't, you don't get that gag. Okay, so you're in the middle of nowhere. You don't know any of the voice repeaters. Maybe you're broken down or something. All you have is a communication device, an amateur radio HT like this. This is a Yaesu. A Kenwood makes them with APRS. Uh, ICOM, oddly enough, does not make a APRS radio. Still don't understand that one. They have DPRS, which is similar, and maybe you can get that to work. I don't know. Let me know about how DPRS, uh, ICOM's APRS works. All right, so here's the HT. We're set up today in the KM6LYW laboratory, computer room, emporium, warehouse. Um, we've got a DigiPi hooked up to an ICOM 705. It's currently in TNC mode on an APRS frequency that you should recognize, a 144390. So it's currently uh, sending all packet data up to the internet using the DigiPi here. Um, if you're not familiar with the DigiPi, you probably have never seen another one of my videos. <laughs> For more information on that, check out uh, KM's, uh, where we're going, Krager.org slash DigiPi. Again, Krager.org slash DigiPi. You know, and I got this, the Zoom stuff kind of working on this. I don't know. I, there's, there's a way to Zoom. Hey, look at that. Technology, science. So Krager.org slash DigiPi. If you want to build this little device, it's it's basically a uh, an uh, all data mode uh, hotspot for your amateur radio. So you can do CW, you know, PSK31, APRS packet. You get a bulletin board running on it. But right now it's in terminal node controller mode, uh, hanging out on 144.39, which is APRS, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, so let's move over to what we're going to do. So I've got this cool new software you can actually use. I do own a cell phone, it doesn't have cellular service. It's a mobile phone for those of you in Europe. Uh, hopefully I'm not too hot here. Um, and I can actually display it on my screen here. So we're gonna have, uh, we have APRS Droid running here. Uh, in fact, I can, I don't know, how does this work? That's my home button. Here's my, it's my Wi-Fi device. I don't wanna call it my mobile, it's my Wi-Fi device. So we're gonna fire up APRS Droid. Cool, and we're connected over Bluetooth to the DigiPi, and we know that because the little Bluetooth symbol is lit up on the top there of the DigiPi. So uh, we can do stuff on APRS using our phone. So it, right now it's in tracking mode, um, which means it's connected. And I am going to send my position just to make sure this works. Um, let me put it into the uh, log mode. These are all the packets flying by on the, on the APRS network. So let me do a send position. We're gonna see if the radio transmits. So you guys are watching uh down here at this uh at this guy let's see if it transmits send my position yep it transmitted actually my hd just lit up because that was its call sign um also you know uh if, for you digipi owners out there um, that built the digipi um, i did fix the red led for usb rigs uh, so if you get a newer version of dire watch um, that red led will light up on transmit um, that was just kind of a hack to get that work so let me look for my ht here so let's get back to our scenario Middle of nowhere, we don't know any of the voice repeaters. We've got an emergency. All we have is an APRS enabled HT like this one. So there's a call sign out there. There's a virtual radio called Repeat, and it's actually got the repeater book database on it. So there's a virtual radio. You can ask it uh, what repeaters are in your area. So it's a call sign is called Repeat. That's a tactical salt call sign. Uh, for those of you who don't have those, and I know that's kind of an American thing. Um, repeat, and it's put together by Walt. 
Uh, my oldest friend, Walt, who we went to college together and everything. That's Whiskey Bravo 4, Bravo Oscar Romeo, W4BOR. And he's got an APRS repeat service. So the call sign is called repeat. And you can send it stuff and you can ask it for voice repeaters in your area and kind of qualify, you know, maybe what frequency they're on, now what features they have. It's basically you have repeater book on your APRS enabled HT. You have access to repeater book. Um, you, don't, you don't need a phone or internet connection for that matter. Um, so I would encourage you, if you want to know more information about this, I'm, I'm going to use my cool Zoom thing here again. I would encourage you to go to aprs-repeat.hemna.com. aprs-repeat.hemna.com. I have to do the rest of this video zoomed in if I don't figure this out. <laughs> You'll get more information on their virtual uh, radio called uh, call sign repeat that's on the APRS network. Um, so basically, we can talk to it, um, it's, it and it will respond. Um, so it, this is based on a software called APRSD. Um, I've done a whole other video on this. This is in my GitHub account. APRS Daemon is what that stands for. And so you can stand up cool APRS services like this. And of course, Walt used APRSD, which we co-developed, to stand up a repeat service. You know, you can do things like email and you know get the weather using this, um, or whatever you can think of if you're a Python uh, programmer. So APRSD is what this is based upon. So let's get back to the repeat service. So basically, you use your HT and you send, you create a new text message on your HT. We'll, we'll do an example here, and send a message to a call sign called repeat. Um, and, and in the most simplest format, what I usually do is I just I just send N3. Uh, like I want to see the three closest uh, repeaters, and it defaults to the two meter repeaters, just because we had to have a default. So you know it's hard to type on these. So you send a message to call sign repeat, and with the message text of N space three. Um, this will work on your FTM 400, your FTM 100, and your APRS uh, enabled HTs. And we're going to do that, and we're going to see where the closest repeaters are. Now, before you do this, I want you to send a beacon out on your radio. So I'm going to send a beacon on this. This is going to send out my position so it knows where the hell I am, right? So there goes my position, and you can see on the DigiPi, I just lit up there. Um, and you'll also see uh, my packet just went out on, well, it's in here somewhere. Here I am. There's my position. KM6LYW. Nah. <laughs> I hope hopefully this phone thing works. Let me know if this is showing up okay. This is actually my, my Wi-Fi phone here. All right, so I sent my position out, and that's the first thing we want to do. Now we want to send, um, I'm just going to send uh, N3 uh, to the call sign called repeat. And I can actually do this on uh, on my phone using APRS Droid, which is connected to the DigiPi in TNC mode. Uh, so I'm going to go over to Messages. All right, and then I'm gonna. There's a call sign called repeat. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear these messages. Um, I'll start it from the beginning so you guys can see how this works. So the call, I'm gonna send that message to a call sign called repeat, and the message text is gonna be just N for nearest three. That's what the N stands for. So nearest three repeaters. That's what I want to see. I can say okay, and we wait, and we wait, and we got an acknowledgement. And here they come. Here's the three closest repeaters to my position uh, from the beacon I sent. So we got uh, W6YDD. Uh, he is uh, 5.2 miles to the east. We got W6SAR. He's 7.7 .7 miles to the west. So we get direction and, 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 and location. We get the tone, offset, all of that. So W6EK, that's the club repeater here. If you're not a member uh, and you're in Northern California, let's join up the W6EK club. Um, so it gives us the frequency, offset, uh, the offset, tone and distance and bearing. Um, so that was the, the top three uh, VHF repeaters. Now, if I wanted to, I'm looking at this, maybe I want, maybe I'm into uh, uh, 70 centimeter stuff or, or you know, I can do, uh, I'm going to just do like the nearest one 70 centimeter repeater. So N170 centimeters. And again, this is going out over RF. You can see it happening here. It's going to a virtual call sign called repeat, and it's responding. And sure enough, a WA6APX is the nearest 70 centimeter repeater. Um, and you can qualify these too. So anything that's on repeater book, you can get access to. So uh, let's say I want the closest, um, I don't know, I've been into D-Star lately. Um, I'm going to do the nearest two repeaters. I can use a plus sign that have D-Star. Um, I'm going to press that. Packet goes out, 
goes, hits the internet or hits the radio waves, comes back. <laughs> it's complicated. But anyways, we've got a couple of them here, uh, one on UHF and one on VHF. So KS6HRP. Um, I happen to know that's a D-Star enabled repeater. In fact, I'm able to hit it sometimes. Um, 10 watts is a little light on this. Um, but that's 20 miles south southwest of here. So you can go anywhere you want and get a repeater, a voice repeater, just by sending a text message, an APRS text message to a call sign called repeat. And this is the syntax. Uh, and, we've, and Walt put some great examples here on, on his on his page. So, I mean, you, you can get like, you know, you can even get, um, you know, six meter repeaters on here. Um, the list of bands uh, that you can find repeaters on. I, I don't know. There's no repeaters on 40 meters. I'm, I'm not sure why we put 40 meters there, but I mean, it goes all the way up to three centimeters. Basically, if it's on repeater book, um, you can get access to that data over APRS. And just for completeness, um, let me, is this, sounds like this mic's popping. I'm going to bend that out a little bit. Just for completeness, we're going to do it on the radio. I know, you know, the cell phone is, is cool and all, but let's, um, Let's actually do this on the radio. This is a disaster here. You wouldn't believe how many USB cords I've got going on here. All right, so here we are on the HT, and I'm going to, so the first thing I'm going to do um, is put this into Digipeter mode. See, right now it's an APRS TNC from the Digipi, and I can't remember which button I press. One of these buttons will put it into Digipeter mode. So right now it's TNC. I'm going to press that button. And this will turn the radio into an APRS Digi. And it will send and receive there. So I'm going to send a beacon out on my radio, see if I show up on the see if I show up on the map here. And sure I am. Sure enough, there it is. KM6LYW radio is now on the list of stations, and it was repeated by the Digipeter. The, uh, the Digipi connected to the 705. All right, do some camera finagling. Camera finagling. All right, let's get this HT on here. So I'm, I don't know how this is going to work. I'm going to make myself smaller, and I'm going to make the HT a little bit bigger here. This is going to be our radio. How's that? What do you think? Maybe I'll just move it over here. What do you think? We're messing around. You guys see how this studio stuff works? All right, let me see. Can you guys see this? This is just an epic amount of glare. Yeah, that's not too bad, actually. Um, so here we are. I'm on an APRS frequency, 144390 in America. That's going to be 144800 for our European friends. And I think for the most of the rest of the world. And I'm going to go into message mode on this HT. And there's a call sign called repeat already there. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to edit that message. This is going to be different depending on your radio. So, you know, I can go up here, move the cursor around and you know, change the call sign, the two. And it's going to be repeat. And I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say N space 1. And then I'm going to send this message. <laughs> I hope you guys can see this. Here it goes. We're sending it now. Let's see if we get it. the closest repeater to our location. All right, there it is, W6YDD. And, of course, it's sending acknowledgments back and forth because uh, APRS, while not a connected protocol, um, does it some acknowledgments, some acts and knacks for uh, for messages? So let me uh, let's go into our messages. All right, let's press the right buttons to, to go into our messages. And here's a new message from Repeat, and we can see uh, from Repeat we've got a repeater called W6YDD at 146.625 uh, negative offset tone 123 hertz, and he's five miles to the east. Um, so we figured out a voice repeater on this frequency. In fact. Uh, I could probably tune to that, and I don't know if I'm going to get through to it or not. Um, <laughs> let me make this smaller. There's usually very few people on that repeater. But anyways, that's just the closest VHF repeater. Let me make this bigger. Okay. Move this back over here. Um, and then we can tune our radio to th that frequency, in which in my case, I think this is... Uh, I've actually got it on a channel here. I think it's channel 64 in my case. I think it was channel 60. All right, so W6YDD Georgetown. Um, I'm tuned into that. And uh, let's see if I can even key it up. Uh, Kilo Mike 6, Lima, Yankee Whiskey, a radio testing. Yeah, I don't have my 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 high gain antenna. This is like a dummy load. And it's, uh, what did we figure out? This is about six miles away. <laughs> I'm not going to get into it. But you know what? I'm low power, too. Um, let me let me try it again. I'm sorry, guys. We for, we got to do this for completeness in the name of science. 
That was low power. Let me kick it up a bit. All right. Kilo Mike 6, Lima Yankee Whiskey Radio Testing. Oh, barely. <laughs> barely made it. Anyways, don't try and use these dummy loads when you're talking on voice. This is great if your digipeter's like right here and your antenna's on the roof. This thing works great. Or maybe if you're walking around the neighborhood. But uh, yeah, dummy load from Diamond Antenna. I actually really like this antenna. Um, <laughs> you know, have, have a better antenna, though, if you're doing some real voice work and people have to actually hear you. All right, so that is the repeat service on APRS. Uh, this is put together by WB4BOR. I'd really encourage you to go out and see uh, his uh, YouTube page. Um, he's got a Patreon page. Um, he, he, man, he hosts the repeat service on the APRSD back end. All right, so let me see if I've, I've missed anything, you guys. Uh, this, is, this is YouTube. He's got like a whole another video. It's kind of like this one um, that shows you how to use it. In fact, it's probably a lot better than, than the one you're watching right now here. Um, let me make sure I've got everybody accommodated. All right. The last thing we got to do is talk about the patrons. So KM6LYW uh, has a patron page. Patreon.com slash KM6LYW. So Patreon.com slash KM6LYW radio. These are the patrons. You guys make this possible. Honestly, I can't do this stuff without you guys. So uh, KM6LYW at Patreon.com. That's the URL. Uh, we are doing great here. Uh, so Fu, Brian, Jake, Jason, Dan, Christopher, Simon, got your name right this time with, <laughs> with the peculiar spelling. Hey, and the, and the rest of the guys, I wish I could say everyone's name here. Um, let me make sure I don't miss anyone. I, I need a slow scroller for Linux. If, if you guys know of a slow scroller that I can use in Linux, that would be cool. Um, but otherwise, I'm just blowing through through the names here. Miguel, Mark, Domingo, Fred, Don, Douglas, JD, David, Jerry Stomp, W. Hill, Heilman. Need to know your first name. I, I'm guessing that's Bill or William. I don't know. I, I don't know. Let me know, guys. Uh, Theodore, we'll call you Ted. Um, Cliff, uh, Andrew, Larry, James, uh, uh, Stephen, Matthew. We got some new guys down here. Um, actually, this list repeats here. And Tyler, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. So like and subscribe if you can. We're just now over a thousand subscribers. Uh, that's fantastic. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know. I didn't read the terms. Of, uh, you know the end user license agreement i don't know what that means when you reach a thousand people someone comes over and punches you in the head probably know that's what it's about uh, um so like and subscribe uh we've got a thousand subscribers now and I, i'm really overwhelmed with the support I, I do appreciate it so if you go out and use the repeat service let me know um we've got uh, we're talking on discord um if you're into the digipi project um we've got a bunch of links there um actually uh i don't know if you guys have seen discord yet it's pretty cool. We're hanging out here. We're really talking about the DigiPi project here. So you can hang out and talk with us live on Discord. In fact, I want to do some more live programming here. Um, here we're talking about the development. Uh, <laughs> Discord for the DigiPi. Hey, Steve is building some cool cases. He's got some 3D renderings from cases for the DigiPi. We desperately need a case for the DigiPi. So thank you, Steve. Um, under development, uh, Rob has actually been looking at building a hat. Um, you know, a very specific. Let me see if I can find uh oh it's under audio devices on our discord um so there's been some hardware engineering i am not a hardware engineer there's been some hardware engineering in fact the wb4bor has a cm4 board that he's looking into uh for this um where is the audio hat uh that rob was working on uh i'm not gonna find it anyways there's a lot of examples on discord check them out rob is an actual hardware engineer so i mean look he actually plucked the capacitors off the FE Pi audio board and stuck it to a Pi Zero. Look how thin that is. Amazing, Rob. Very cool. All right, so I could do Discord all day. This this is cool. All right, so questions and comments down below. Um, like and subscribe if you can, and uh, I'll see you next week. This is KM6 LYW Radio, and I'm clear.